Hi, I'm Annabelle. And I'm Spencer. And we're counting everything in the school. What started as a task to fill time has got us thinking about the spaces we are familiar with and how we encounter them, or how, and how we interact with them. Being a student at ESA is a very different experience than what we were used to in the past. At ESA, there is a unique emotional relationship that many students experience with the atmosphere of the school. Through this piece, we are interested in exploring not so much that emotional relationship, but rather what truly makes up the physical building and the smaller parts within, and seeing how that relates to the to the larger emotional relationship. At the very start of this project, we went into it blind, uh, not truly understanding the scale and intensity of what we were getting ourselves into. It started with only counting corners. We didn't really have much of a system. Um, we just started at one end of the school until we got around uh, back to Mr. Very's desk and discussed the implications of how our counting could translate into the future. From there, we started to count everything. We developed a system to keep track of and quantify the objects that we were counting. As we developed the system and the rules that accompanied them, we thought more about how rules, how rules can affect the art making process. Rules and restrictions when forced upon you can seem limiting. However, when these rules are, wait, it can seem limiting, however, when you impose your own rules on yourself, it can be a quite freeing experience. These are the rules we have created to structure our active counting. They progressed and evolved as we truly started to understand the scope of the project and what it has become. Inspired by our original active counting corners, we came up with very specific instructions for the categorization of what makes a corner. In the end, we decided that a corner is where two edges of a wall, ceiling, permanent object, or permanent element meet. However, permanent element only constructs a corner when it meets with a wall or permanent object. Now that may seem a bit confusing because along with the rules, we had to come up with a whole new vocabulary to really define and quantify what we were counting and how they compose corners and other aspects of the school. We decided to categorize those objects by their role within the environment. Our permanent classification has two subsections, permanent objects and permanent elements. Permanent objects are those that cannot be moved from the space. They are part of or attached to the building. Some permanent objects that we have counted so far are bricks, floor tiles, ceiling tiles, and light switches. Permanent elements are different than permanent objects. It is a larger element of the building rather than a permanent object that is added to the core structure such as a window or door frame. Semi-permanent objects are those that are purpose placed in the room and they're important to the function or atmosphere of the room. For example, in the art room, our books are semi-permanent as their long-term homes are in that room. However, paintings would fall in our temporary category as they have homes in other places or aren't intended to stay in the room for an extended period of time. Temporary objects migrate within the room and building as a whole. They are usually light and can often be moved around. So that's a total of 19,329 objects so far between these three categories and these three rooms. When processing a room, we count permanent objects first, semi-permanent objects second, and temporary objects third, counting the biggest to smallest objects within those categories in that order. This allows the way in which we record our data on paper to give perspective to the physical contents of the room. While counting, we gained a more expansive understanding of the spaces that we've cataloged so far. And that emotional experience that many have with the atmosphere of the school, we've started to develop with the building itself, simply because of the time we've spent focusing on individual aspects of the building and how they come together to make up the bigger picture. We have gained a certain intimacy to that relationship between us and the structure. And generally, most people would overlook the details of the spaces that we've counted in their encounters with those spaces. <laughs> But now when we enter those rooms, we have this additional knowledge and greater understanding of the building. It almost feels like we have answered some unasked question of our surroundings. Thank you. Thanks. Woo!